so as we begin to explore befriending our nervous systems today, one of the things we're doing is we are making the implicit experience that's going on inside our nervous system all the time, and we're bringing it into explicit awareness. So neuroception is this wonderful word that Steve Portis created to describe the way the nervous system takes in information, because the only word that came close was perception, right? And perception involves the cortex, involves your brain. And while the nervous system connects with cortex, um, at its heart, it's a subcortical part of our um, anatomy, right? It it starts in the brainstem and it goes down and then it connects with the nerves in the face when we saw for the social engagement system. And it does have some projections to cortex for prefrontal. But when it's taking in information, It's working below those levels. And so he developed the word neuroception, which I absolutely love. Neuro for nervous system and perception for the way we perceive. So neuroception. And neuroception is responding to cues of safety and danger. And the easiest way to think is inside, outside, between. So it's listening inside your body. It's listening outside in the environment. And it's listening between your system and other systems, so between people. And this is going on micro moment to micro moment. All the time we're alive, neuroception is happening. So I'm going to invite you to take an autonomic adventure for a moment and tune in to your neuroception. So if you can just invite your brain for the next eight, ten slides to, to take a back seat and let your nervous system sort of take you on a journey first. Your brain's going to come in very quickly to make a story, but let's just start by inviting the nervous system. So just looking at the slides and just noticing, welcome or warning, approach or avoid. So we'll take a moment and just notice for yourself, where does your neuroception take you? Where did you go? And, you know, some of those slides um, bring a very varied response in, in the viewer. Right? And I try to put in slides that would bring up different experiences for people. And I, I mentioned the slide of the single teddy bear. And the, what I get from people when, when I'm um, in trainings is, it either brings up a, um, a well-loved experience and a, and a longing to connect or an abandoned, forlorn and a desire to get away from that image. The, the, the blue door image brings up a variety of experiences because it can feel inviting of curiosity, inviting of possibility, or it can feel um, sort of a, a forewarning of, something unpredictable, unexpected, right? And I try to mix them up because what I wanted you to have for an experience was different um, nervous system um, approach, avoid, welcome, warn, some neutral even. And in the warning kind of experience of, of, you know, mobilizing, get me out of here or anger 
or that immobilizing, disconnecting. And then the experience of feeling, oh, I can just relax in that image. Because that's really what's happening for us every moment of the day. We're, we're taking in um, information in these ways. And those were just images. Think of what happens when you have all of the sensory information that's coming at you. So the, the lesson here is that we can tune into what happens in our own nervous system. And that really is our responsibility to tune in to our own nervous system. And we can't assume what's happening in another nervous system. So if you happen to be watching this with another person with you, you ask them, you might find, oh, they had a very different experience. Right? So the, the, you know, the invitation when we're looking through the polyvagal lens, through the lens of the nervous system, is to know, oh, here's what happened for me. How did that land in your system? What happened for your nervous system experience? Right? And if we really want to stay true to um, the lens of the nervous system, you know, we use that kind of language. You don't say, well, how did you feel about that? Or what did you think about that? Because again, thinking, feeling is, is another level up. I want to stay right here at the embodied nervous system experience. Where did that land in your system? And as we map your system a bit later in this, this webinar, and that's the question we keep going back to, where did that take you on your map? Right. So that's the, that's the experience of neuroception. And here's what happens. We sometimes have what we call a neuroceptive match. And when neuroception, you know, sort of matches what's happening in the world, the nervous system um, activates the stage that brings the energy that's necessary to manage this experience. And sometimes neuroception is one of safety and connection, and that's just right. And it brings us the energy to move forward, engage, connect, communicate cooperate, collaborate, all those lovely things, right? And sometimes the neuroception is one that it feels a bit unsafe at the moment, or there's something a bit not okay in my environment. And then neuroception is going to activate the state that allows me to take the survival response needed. Sometimes a fight response is exactly the right response. Sometimes a, an active escape is the right response. And sometimes that um, disappearing, disconnecting is the right response. So again, it's not always that we simply want to be in this welcome. Sometimes the situation calls for an adaptive survival response. So that's the match. And then we have this mismatch that often happens, right? With a neuroceptive mismatch, we have an inability to calm our defense systems when we're actually in a safe environment. So it may be concretely safe, but my nervous system may get a neuroception of danger. Right? And then it will activate my habitual protective response pattern. Right? This hypervigilant alarmed experience. And you might think about your own experience. Do you wander through the world more often in this hypervigilant alarmed place. And if so, is it an accurate um, experience of neuroception? And it's interesting because at this moment in the world, neuroception is taking in cues of danger all over the place. And for many people in many environments and many experiences, that is an accurate neuroception, there are a lot of cues of danger. And sometimes, because we're getting so bombarded by cues of danger, we actually are in a safe environment, but our nervous system can't calm down. The neuroception can't find the cues of safety, right? And we are, um, we humans have a negativity bias. We're built that way, built for survival so that our nervous system pays more attention to cues of danger than cues of safety. So an equally intense cue of safety gets less attention from the nervous system than a cue of danger. Just the way we are built, right? Helped us survive. It's still helping us survive, I, I imagine. But what it means is we often miss the cues of safety that are actually in our environment. So that's one mismatch. The other mismatch is when we can't activate 
our defense systems when we are actually in a risk environment. So our neuroception doesn't give us the accurate signals of danger, right? And this response is this, this dulled, unaware, going through the world, not really here in that protective cocoon, right? But it means that I'm, I'm at risk because I can't activate my defense systems. I don't get the cues of danger that then would activate my defense. I also think this is a high risk taking um, folks who, who just don't get the accurate cues of, of the intensity of danger there is in that high risk activity they're doing. So again, think about the way you're moving through the world and perhaps you're more on this. Um, sort of in a, in a protective space, not, not really taking in the cues. And, you know, our systems are, are overwhelmed. At that point. And, you know, staying in that hypervigilant place for such a long time is really challenging and draining. And then we may go to this dulled unaware as a, as a, as a respite from the hypervigilant. And we're, again, we're going to map this in the second part of the program this morning, but just think about where you are and how you move through these mismatches, right? And then what do we do when there is a mismatch? You know, how do we work with neuroception is really the question because neuroception is simply a biological experience that is happening um, in your body. Your nervous system is, is doing this all the time. We can't work with neuroception directly. We have to bring perception to neuroception. So that's the first step. We bring perception. We turn toward our nervous system and we tune in. We bring our active awareness to it. And then the next step is to bring what I call discernment. We have to move into discernment to decide, you know, it is, is what my neuroception is giving me needed. Right? So the question I use is in this moment, in this place, with this person or these people, is this response needed? And right? so that's really the question because it's going to take in those cues of safety and danger, right? It brings us into the present moment and the environment we're in and the people or the person we're in connection with. And then it asks the question, is this response or this intensity of response needed? Right? And remember, it doesn't ask, is it appropriate? Because the autonomic nervous system doesn't work that way. It doesn't work with moral meaning or motivation. It simply works with survival. Right? We, we humans add the, the story. That's the brain adding the story about motivation or meaning and oftentimes moral meaning around people's behaviors and their responses. You think about that, that's what happens about, you know, our own responses. If we are in a response, we begin to have this, make meaning of it, right? And judge it and self-criticism. And that's your brain, not your nervous system. Your nervous system is simply responding. So the question is, in this moment, in this place, with this person or these people, is this response needed? So I'm going to invite you to think of a time recently when you had a response that felt somewhat out of balance to the situation, right? And that's the cue we're looking for. If something feels a bit too much or not enough for the situation, there's an imbalance between my nervous system response and what's going on. Then I want to look at this through this question of discernment, right? Because what happens is some familiar cue from our past has come alive in the present and has brought this intensity of response. If we think about trauma for a moment, this is how trauma activates in the moment, right? There's a familiar flavor of something and our nervous system feels that, senses that tiny flavor of a past traumatic um, neuroceptive experience. And then it lights up in the present moment. So discernment is one way to begin to turn towards that and think, oh, is, this, is this a trauma story that has come to life? Because something, either inside my body, in the environment around me, or between me and another nervous system has come alive. 
So this guiding question that we use is, in this moment, does your neuroception sense me as a restorative resource or a threat? Right? That's the question we're asking whenever we're with another human being. When we're working as, as um, therapists, when we're working as, as clinicians or any kind of helping professional, this is the question we are asking. Am I sending the cues of safety out into the world to this other human being that they need so that they sense me as a restorative resource? Or have I moved into the category of threat? And again, I always intend to show up as a restorative resource. And I can feel it when I'm in that connection with another person. And I can feel it when I have moved out of that place and have become no longer a friend, but now a foe. I'm no longer a resource. I'm now a challenge or a threat. And then my work is to bring input, explicit awareness to that and ask the question, so what just happened? Right? If, boy, it felt in my nervous system like we just disconnected for a moment. I wonder what happened. What were the cues of danger that came in? So I'm going to invite you for a moment to do this simple practice with me. And we're going to start with it. I'm going to ask you just to identify one cue of safety, one cue of danger. Um, it may be easy to identify more, but let's just start with one and, and then see where we go. So we're going to start with the inside. So at this moment, inside your body, can you identify one cue of safety and one cue of danger? Inside your body, just listening in, what's a cue of safety? And what's a cure teacher? And then we're going to invite us to move into the environment. So at this moment, in the in the environment just around you, your immediate environment, can you identify one cue of safety and one cue of danger? And then we're going to expand the environment out from your immediate environment. One step out, whatever that is for you, whether it's outside the room you're in, outside the building you're in, out into your community or neighborhood. One step out. And what's a cue of safety and a cue of danger? And then let's take the global step out and step out into your, your country or even the global connection. What's one cue of safety and one cue of danger in that large space, that large environment? All right, and then let's work our way back here to this environment. And let's come into the sense of a cue of safety and a cue of danger in your connection with others. It may be in your connection with me, one cue of safety, one cue of danger. It may be in your connection with someone else in, in, in the space you're in right now, in, in your Sunday space. You can just think of someone in, in your world and just think, what's the cue of safety? Nervous system to nervous system in that connection. And what's a cue of danger? So you're beginning to get to tune into your nervous system through neuroception. And then this is the guiding question we're asking all the time. Am I, am I being perceived as a resource or a threat? Am I sending out cues of welcome or signals of warning? So what do we do with that? And here's how I envision this. And here's what we're going to work with now so that you can begin to befriend your own nervous system. We put those three states on the autonomic ladder. Right. Ventral is at the top, and you can see the ventral um, figure there is, is um, delighted with the world, right? Can see all sorts of things safely anchored up there at the top of the ladder. Neuroception is one of safety, social, engaged, connected through those four streams of connection. Sympathetic, we move down to the middle of the ladder. You can see the fight and flight that happens there. 
Neuroception is one of danger. Mobilized action taking. And then this little person at the bottom of the ladder in dorsal. The neuroception is one of life threat. Right? Remember, neuroception is simply the way nervous system is taking in. And so we call it a neuroception of life threat because it's overwhelming. Whereas the neuroception of danger and sympathetic gives us action taking, doing, this overwhelming cue of danger, which we call life threat. We now go into shutdown or collapse. We're immobile. Okay, so here's the autonomic ladder. So let's think what are the emergent properties that come from each of these states. So from a state of protection, either sympathetic mobilization or dorsal disconnection, survival is the only goal. And while most things in the nervous system in our body, even in the way we do therapy, most things are both and experiences, this is an either or. So when we go into one of these protective states, adaptive survival responses close our system to connection and to change. So we can no longer connect and no longer engage in the change process. It's only from a state of connection that we can be in this process of change, health, growth, and restoration. Social engagement can happen only when we're in a state of connection. So when we move out of connection into protection, we also leave social engagement, right? When we're in the rigid and stuck end of this continuum, there are more cues of danger than cues of safety, right? And the safety danger equation is the easiest way, I think, of to think about it. When there are more cues of safety than danger, we're ready for connection, new stories emerge, change is possible, and we experience both physical and psychological well-being. More cues of safety than danger, we can anchor in ventral, right? More cues of danger than safety, the opposite happens. A survival response activates, either sympathetic or dorsal. And we get stuck in the story that comes from that state. Our system is closed to change, and we suffer from physical disease and psychological dis-ease, right? So through the lens of the nervous system, this is the equation we're working with. And we need to rebalance this equation to be able to come back into ventral. And I do it simply by, I usually put it on a piece of paper with my clients, right? We look for cues of safety and danger in the categories of embodied environmental and relationships. And the cues of safety have to outweigh the cues of danger, right? And it's important for us to look for both, cues of safety and cues of danger, because remember, it's a both and, right? We need to reduce or resolve cues of danger and actively experience cues of safety to change that equation. So we create a story of safety by listening to our nervous system. Safety is not a cognitive experience. Safety is an embodied one, right? And we create this story of safety by connecting with our autonomic nervous system, by listening there. So I'm going to leave you with this, um, with benevolence. Benevolence is the active, ongoing, intentional use of ventral vagal energy in service of healing, right? This is what we do with our anchor and ventral, we can then use it in service of healing our own and others. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to hear the full version, you can do so with a Weekend University Premium Membership. This gets you access to our master library of over 230 talks and interviews with the world's leading psychologists, professors and authors, as well as transcripts, CPD certification, quizzes and unlimited access to the recordings from our annual conferences. For more information, please go to theweekenduniversity.com forward slash membership.